Greetings, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another episode of Branch 1779's full coverage informational video series. In today's episode, we're going to discuss how a carrier should request time when they believe they need to speak with their steward. Folks, I'm John Mitchell, president of Branch 1779, and here with me today, socially distant, of course, is Ben Paul, the Branch Director of Education. Ben, say hi to the crowd. Thanks, John. It's a privilege to join you in this important conversation on the process of how to request time to consult with your steward. In this episode, we want to talk about when the need arises for you to consult with your steward. Now, let's take an example. Let's say you've submitted a request for leave. Management has either denied it or just flat out failed to respond to it. What do you do? Ben, what do you believe we should do? Well, John, in that example, you're going to want to speak with your shop steward. So Ben, should I just walk up to my steward when they're at their case casing mail or doing some other duties on the workroom floor and try and engage them? No, you have to request time from your immediate supervisor. This language is found in Article 17. In JCAM page 176, it states in relevant part, an employee must be given reasonable time to consult with his or her steward and such time may not be measured by a predetermined factor. In addition to this language, you can find step fours out there that address this issue. For example, M00458 states in part, reasonable, in our opinion, dictates that in most cases, the grievant and steward should be able to discuss the grievance without delay. However, in 95% of the cases, they found that there should be no more than a two hour delay. And normally there should be no delay whatsoever that goes past that employee's tour of duty. So Ben, riddle me this. Why is it important to request to speak to your steward and be given that time on the clock? Well, John, to answer that question, it's going to require a two-pronged answer. First, it's contractual. Second, it requires that you have some time with your shop steward, a little one-on-one -on -one situation to where you can discuss the matter in privacy away from the distractions of the workroom floor. And so your steward can take notes just in case there's a grievance filed at a later time. Brothers and sisters, it's important that you ask for this time on the clock to talk with your steward instead of trying to talk to them in passing or sending them lengthy texts during your lunch or your break. Ben, have you got some examples of reasons to consult with your steward? Well, John, some examples are discipline, leave issues, pay discrepancies, overtime issues, opting issues, posting issues, the list goes on and on. And remember this, folks, when in doubt, request to speak to your steward. For members of Branch 1779, we've created a form for you to present to your supervisor when requesting time to consult with your steward. That form is now available on the Branch Facebook page, or you can get that form by contacting your steward or a member of the Branch. Ben, as we get ready to wrap this up, my knowledgeable colleague, do you have any other suggestions or insights that might be helpful? Remember, it's not a burden to see your shop steward. Your steward is there to represent you and file a grievance on your behalf. Also, this is your steward's duty, and more importantly, it's your right. Remember, if you don't get time to speak with your steward after you requested it, this would be a good idea then on your lunch or your break or when you're off the clock to reach out to your steward and let them know of your concerns. Brothers and sisters, that sums it up for this episode of Full Coverage. I'd like to thank my esteemed colleague and the Director of Education for Branch 1779, Ben Paul, for joining me. On behalf of Branch 1779, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more episodes, and we certainly hope to see you next time. Take care.